A safe can be opened by inserting a code consisting of three digits between zero and nine. So I labeled the questions. So part A. So how many codes are possible? So we have like um possible digits like um zero to nine. That's like uh ten numbers. So for each code, would be like um possibility of ten numbers. So we have like one thousand codes possible. And for part B is how many uh codes are possible with no digits repeated. So um since like we on we restrict one digit, so it's like ten times nine times eight, so we get like seven hundred and twenty codes possible with no digits repeated. And for C, how many codes starting with one are possible? So um since we have only one is possible, so one hundred to uh one hundred ninety nine. That's like with starting with one. That's like one hundred codes that's possible starting with one. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you. This is Catherine. All right, Catherine. Next one. Catherine. Um. Good evening, Professor. Good evening. Um. This is Chapter One, Question Three. Um. Ten employees of a company are to be assigned to ten different managerial posts. One to each post. And how many ways can these posts be filled? Um, since there are 10 employees and they are assigned to the, each post, that means they cannot be the same, uh, which means that they can't repeat. So this is permutation. So I did 10 times, 9 times, 8 times, 7 times, 6 times, 5 times, 4 times, 3 times, 2 times, 1, which is 10 factorial. And I got the answer uh, 3,628,000. To an, an 800. Okay, that's it. Yeah, nice. If anyone has any questions, just feel free to jump in. Yeah, so this is, who's this? This is Yong Shin. Yong Shin. Yeah. Okay, Yong Shin. Thank you, Yong Shin. Thank you. Let me give you credit. Yong Shin. Next one. Hi, Professor. Hello. Here is. Hello. Yes. So I'm going to present the question number nine. So it's okay. a box contains 30, 30, 13 boxes, of which four are yellow, four are green, three are red, and two are blue. But the numbers of ways in which those blocks balls can be arranged in a line. So this is okay. using the combination uh, equation, which is like a n factorial device, n1 factorial, n2 factorial. And because here I have like a third, 13 box is the to to total. So I use right. the 13 factorial device, like four are yellow, four are green, and three are red, and two are blue. So just use the 13 factorial device, four factorial, four factorial, and three factorial, and two factorial, and this is the answer. Okay, great. You just didn't show the calculation, but well, <laughs> yeah. this is a case of a permutation, because mm -hmm. we're treating the yellow ones are the same right mm -hmm. that's why we divide because 13 factorial over counted so we have to divide by four factorial good nice okay. let's show you next one so we have uh jillian uh, Zakia and Tom. So we're left with you three. Whoever is ready? Uh, I can go first, but okay. I and Tom both prepared uh, 
number seven can we just like do a b o c d okay so whoever is ready uh i'm ready but um okay how to how to share my screen oh okay you see oh, i see it okay share content can i see my screen now yeah for the seven a we got in how many ways can three boys and three girls sit in a row i first assume there are six available seats and the first seat would be six choice uh, and then second seat would be five and so far we have six material for the seven b in how many ways can three boys and three girls sit in a row if the boys and the girls are each each two sit together so we have two case boy 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 go 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 or go 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 boy 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 in this case since boys can switch C among themselves and girls too. So we have three factor wheel times three factor wheel. Because we have two case, so we have multiplied by two, and that'll be 72 case. Nice. Also, you split this one question into two people. A two case. So, no. So, a, so you are doing A, B, uh, Tom is doing oh, yeah. C, D. Uh, I see. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh. Uh, uh, could I use like a blank whiteboard? Because. Uh, sure. Go ahead. But uh, click on share content. Go to whiteboard. Right. Share blank whiteboard. Okay. So for seven C. We have in how many ways if only the boys must sit together. So we can think of it as um, uh, that uh, the boys together is like uh, three in a row. So then it would be uh, basically uh, um, we would have four possibilities for this. Um, Are you sharing the whiteboard? I don't see anything. Um, I, oh, yes. I just yes, typed yes. it in. Okay. So there's four possibilities if all the boys must sit together. So for this, we have, um, it would be four multiplied by three factorial because we have, um, permutation for the boys. And then we multiply by three factorial again for the three, for the permutations for the girls. So for the answer for 7c would be 4 times 3 factorial times 3 factorial which equals 144. And for part d, it is how many ways if no two people of the same sex are allowed to sit together? So for that, um, since they're not allowed to sit together, is basically alternating. So it is either this um, permutation or it is either uh, this for 7D. And so we have um, for the first one, it would be three times three times two times two times one times one. And since we have another group of this, we just multiply that number by two. So we would have that um, would become, uh, the answer would become that number times two. I'm trying to write it in board. 48. <laughs> uh, okay. So yeah, it, it would become 72 after you multiply this by two again. Um, yeah. Okay, so what's your final answer for the second one? Seventy two, right? Okay. All right, so this is hold on one second. This is Tom? Yeah, that's me. 
Yep. Oh, okay, that's fine. All right, thank you. <clears throat> mm, Tom, I'm why I don't see your name. Oh, here. Oh, uh, sorry, your name. Okay, so uh, so left with uh, Zakia, Zakia, and also this is SM. Same, you want to present for? Yes, sure. I'll go ahead. I'll go as well. Okay, either of you, whoever is ready. I can go if, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, sorry, this is my first time using uh, Blackboard Collab, so I'm not sure how to. I mean. Okay, you want to use whiteboard? So if you click oh. on sheet content. Oh, perfect. I have this. Okay, let me see. Okay, so this is my question. So this is number four. Uh, can you guys see Are it? You seeing it? No, I cannot see it. Oh, okay. Now I see it. Oh, hold okay. on a second. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so let me bring this properly in the screen. So for the first question is, uh, in this instance, uh, Jim, uh, John, Jim, Jay, and Jack have formed a band consisting of four instruments. They can all play the four instruments. How many ways we can arrange the uh, possible ways they can play an instrument? So if John can play four instruments, then Jim would only have options to play the rest of the three instruments. So would multiply with three. And then Jay would have option to only play two instruments, which would be two. And then Jack would only have option to play one instrument, which would be one. Now this is a uh, four factorial, which is four plus by three, 12, 24. The answer is 24 for the first part of the question. Okay. Now on the second, now the second part, if John and Jim can play all four instruments, but Jay and Jack can play only piano and drums, the probability for Jay and Jack is simply one multiply one because that's the only options they have. And then John, sorry, John and Jim, and then they only have the options to play two other instruments. So John would have the options to play two, and then uh, Jim would then have, have the option to play two. Overall, this same just comes up to be four. That would be the answer for number four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, like sometimes those questions we have to use logic when to think about it. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. So that's that's the same, right? So Zakia, last one. You can see, I'm professor. You can well, see the, the, the problem? Yes. Okay. Yes. OK. <clears throat> so it's question 17 from chapter 1. A dance class consists of 22 students, of which 10 are women and 12 are men. If five men and five women are to be chosen and then paired off, how many results are possible? So we have a um, number of ways of selecting five men from 12. So 12 choose five. And then uh, for women, we have 10 choose um, five. So total number of com combinations is we multiply both of them. So for that, we have to use the formula for con combinations and choose R which is n factorial divided by um, n minus r factorial times r factorial. So yeah, I just uh, did the calculations over here for 12 choose 5 and 10 choose 5. We can um, use that formula, which is n is 12 and r is 5. So 12 factorial divided by 12 minus 5 factorial multiply 5 factorial. So I just did the calculations over here. I 
cancel out the seven factorial and seven factorial and um, I just show the calculations over there for right. each of them yeah and then I have um, total number of com combinations is um, we multiply both of them this is what we get and number of ways that five women and five and can be paired off is five factorial ways so the total number of ways they they want to know the uh, the result how many results are possible so we multiply the total number of combinations uh, with the five factorial okay all right thank you thank you thank you thank you anyone else who would like to present okay if not let's go to let's talk about multi coefficient Right, so we have covered 2.1.2, 1.3, 1 1.4. So today we're going to finish chapter one by talking about 1.5 uh, multinomial coefficients and 1.6, the number of integer solutions of equations. Basically, it's just application of a multinomial coefficients. All right, let's go, let me make this bigger. How do I make this bigger? I have to go to the top, I guess. Let me see. All right, is this okay for everyone to see it? Yes. If that's, okay, yeah. if there's any problem, let me know. Or if there's any question, let me know also. Okay, so multinomial coefficients. So let's see the setup. So a set of n distinct atoms is to be divided into r distinct groups. So, so imagine we have n things, uh, distinct, different things. And we can make r groups out of those n things. And each group may have n1 many, n2 many. So each group have different members. First group has um, n1 of them, n2 of them, so because we have R groups, so the last one, we noted as NR, right? So those numbers represent how many, so we have N things and we have R groups. So each group has a number. So group one has this many member, group two, N2, then NR members. So which means n equals to all the members, all the numbers we add up, right? So n1, n2 up to nr adds up to be n. So you did it right here. This is imagine your head. So we have n1 plus n2 plus n3 up to summation plus nr equals to the n. So what do we care about this? So in this session, we care about how many different divisions are possible. How many different, you know, we have those number of groups. So out of this and many things, how many possible, how many possible different groups we can make? So we have out of N choose N1 possible choices for the first group, right? And then for the second group, how many? Because now N1 group, so the first group is made by N1 people. So how many people left to choose? So that's n minus n1. Out of n minus n1, we want to choose n2 people to make a second group, and so on and so forth, right? 
So the third group will be n minus the number in the first group, the number in second group. Then out of this rest of them, we want to choose n3 for the third group, so on and so forth. So the last group will be out of n minus n1 minus n2 minus up to n r minus 1. Out of those people, we want to choose n r. So then we can do the calculation. And by counting principle, we multiply the choices right, in each step. Then we do the calculation, we simplify some terms. So in the end, we get this nice formula. So how many ways to think about it. if we have 100 people, we want to make five groups, right? How many different five groups we can make? And it depends on each group, how many people. Right? Maybe you'll have 10 in a group, 20 in a group, and 30 in a group, and so on and so forth. So it says n factorial divided by the members in the first, first, the first group, the number, the number of members in the first group factorial, then up to the last group, the number, the the number of members in the last group factorial. Let's see an example. Okay, so this is a formula. So if n1 plus n2 up to nr equals to n, and we define, we use this notation. We use this notation, right? We use this notation. We have an n on the top, n1 comma, n2 comma, up to nr. And this represents this formula, n factorial divided by the number in each group factorial. Right. Let's see example. So a police department in a small city consists of 10 officers. So the pool has a 10, so n equals to 10. If the department poli uh, policy is to have five of the officers patrolling the streets, so the first group, we have five people, and two of the officers are working full time at the station. So the second group, right, two people, and three of them on reserve at the station. So a third group. So we have three groups. So n one is five, n two is two, and three is three. And the question: How many different? How many different divisions? Well, how many different? Okay, let's use this word. How many different divisions of the 10 officers into the three groups are possible? Just follow the formula. 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial divided by 3 factorial, right? So we do the calculation, 2,520 possible divisions. Let's see 5B. 10 children are to be divided into A team, B team of 5 each. So... Right, n equals to 10, and n1 equals to 5, n2 equals to 5. So what, how many different divisions are possible? Basically, division means how many different kinds, of, how, many, how many different ways to group this, right? So 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial divided by 5 factorial, which is 225, 20, 252 possible divisions. Easy. 5C, in order to play a game of basketball, 10 children at the playground divide themselves into two teams of five each. Oh, two teams of five each. Divide themselves into two teams of five each. How many different divisions are possible? Okay, let's see the difference. I didn't see the difference from 5B. Okay, let's read these notes. So this example is different from 5B because now the order of the two teams is irrelevant. There's no A or B team. Oh, okay as long as two teams. So do you see this? You know, in this 
this one, the order matters, right? Either in tumor A, so this is more like a permutation. Either you're either in tumor A or in tumor B. If you're in A, it's different from you are in B, right? But this one doesn't care as long as two groups, more like a combination. So as long as you divide it into two teams or five each, doesn't matter which team, does not matter in which team. So that's why we have 10 factorial divided by five, five factorial divided by five factorial, then we have to divide by two factorial, right? Because in AB, we permuted two things. So here we did not. So we have divided by two factorial, so which is 126. If anyone has any questions, feel free to stop me at any time, okay? Okay, let's see, multi uh, multinomial theorem. So now we have x1 plus x2 up to x plus xr raised by n. Raised by n, let's see what does this n do. So that equals to, looks like a binomial, right? We used to have x1 plus x2 or a plus b raised by n. But now we have a different, we have r of x's, we have r of n's. So they, we use this summation sign. We use this, you know, n1 up to nr. Then n1 up to nr, the summation is n. Summation is n. Okay, let's see how is this defined. So out of n, choose this. Right. So we have this n factorial divided by n1 factorial divided by n2 factorial up to divided by n r factorial. Then we have this x1 raised by n1, x2 raised by n2, up to xr raised by n r. So what is this? So this is the sum is over all non-negative integer valued vectors. Interesting. Right. Okay, let's see an example. In the first round of a knockout tournament involving n equals two to the m's power players. The n players are divided into n divided by two pairs, which with each of these pairs then playing a game. The losers of the games are eliminated while the winners go on to the next round because it's a tournament where the process is repeated until only a single player remains. Suppose we have a knockout tournament of A players. Interesting, how many possible outcomes are there for the initial round? So given an example, one outcome is that one beats two, three beats four, five beats six, seven beats eight. So let's, that's eight. B is how many outcomes of tournament are possible where an outcome gives complete information for all rounds. Let's see, I have to read this. So solution, one way to determine the number of possible outcomes for the initial round is to first determine the number of possible pairings for that round. To do so, note that the number of ways to divide the A players into, two, into a first pair, a second pair, a third pair, and a fourth pair is out of A, we have a two, two players, two players, two players, two players, right? So that's n factorial divided by two factorial raised by four. Two factorial is a two, so there's a two raised by four. So the number of possible pairings when there is no ordering of the four pairs is a factorial divided by two raised by four, right? Because the four pairs are equally ranked. Then we divide it by four factorial because when we do n factorial, we over calculate it. For each such pairing, there are two possible choices from each pair as to the winner of that game, right, showing that there are 
a factorial divided by 2 raised by 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial. Now multiply by 2 raised by 4. 2 raised by 4. Because each one has each one has two possible choices, right? And there are four of them. So we have multiplied by 2 raised by 4. So that's the result of this. Multiply by 2 raised by 4. Which will simplify, we get a factorial divided by 4 factorial possible results of round 1. This says another way to see this is to note that out of A, choose four possible choices of the four winners. And for each such choice, there are four factorial ways to pair the four winners with the four losers, showing that there are four factorial multiplied by out of A, choose the four, which is also A factorial divided by four factorial possible results for the first round. OK, so this is for the initial round. For the initial round, we have two different ways to calculate. Whichever way, you know, um, more logical to, your, to you, you can, you know. Any questions for this? OK, let's see for the, for the second question is asking for all rounds. Similarly, for each result of round one, there are four factorial divided by two factorial possible outcomes of round two. Uh, because here we're pairing a factorial divided by four factorial, because we have a players. So here, yeah, a players, and we want to group them in two, pair in two. So we have four, so a factorial divided by four factorial. So now for the second round, because winners and losers, right, we have four factorial divided by two factorial possible outcomes for round two. For each of the outcomes of the first two rounds, there are two factorial divided by one factorial possible outcomes for round three. So, so by counting principle, we multiply them first round we have this many ways. Second round, this many ways. Third round, we have this many ways. And we simplify, simplify, simplify. We have a factorial divided by one factor, which is a factorial possible outcomes of the total tournament. Indeed, the same argument can be used to show that the negative tournament of two raised by n players has n possible outcomes. So it depends on the member, right? Depends on the member. So for this question, that's n factorial. For all rounds, the, n, the a factorials, a factorial ways. So in general, the n factorial ways for all rounds. So this um, pretty direct, right? Let's see this example. So this example is the notation here. Right? X1 up to plus up to XR raised by N, right? defined as this, defined as this. So X1 plus X2 plus X3 raised by two equals two. Uh, remember the summation goes from zero to, so this is a two, right? From zero to two. You see this one, the summation sign. It doesn't say anything, but we understand as is, we have N1 up to NR. Let's see this. So we choose, so two, to choose, choose two from the first one, then the second has to be zero, zero. Second and third has to be zero, zero, right? So we have x1 raised by n1, right? So n, n1, x1 raised by n1, then this two raised by zero. Then two, 
from x2, so this is n2 for x2, so we will have 0 for x1, 0 for n1, 0 for n3. So the match with this, so we have only x2 raised by 2. And 2, n3, so we have 0, 0 for x1, x2. We have x3 raised by 2. So that's for 0. Now for 1. For 1, we have the first 2 to be 1. Then n3 is 0. We we'll match up with this. Then the first one, and third one, so n1, n3 is 1, n2 is 0. Then we have the second and the third one to be 1, the first one to be 0, match with the exponent of the axis. Yeah, so that's it. That's, that's the only possibility, right? 1, 0, 2. So then we do the calculation. The first one, we can calculate the 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial divided by 0 factorial divided by 0 factorial. That's just 1. So I have x1 raised by x1 squared. The second one, same thing. We have x2 squared. The other one, we get x3 squared. Yeah. So this one is 2 factorial divided by 1 factorial divided by 1 factorial. We will have 2. Then we have x1, x2. So we have 2, x1, x2. And this one, we have x1, x3. Right. Sorry. So we have 2x1, x3, and the last one, we have 2x2, x3. So this is just calculation, all right? Just use this, use this notation, multi, it's, uh, this theorem. This is called the multinomial theorem. Multinomial theorem, right? We, we learned binomial theorem binomial theorem. So this is more than more than um, two terms. So multinomial theorem. So this is example of multinomial, multinomial theorem. And we will see how do we use this. Okay, how do we use this multinomial theorem? Let's see this one. So 1.6, the number of integer solutions of equations. Let's see we have equations something like this. x1 plus x2 plus xr equals to n. Uh, okay, let's see this proposition first. So let's see the setup. So there are, out of n minus 1, choose r minus 1, distinct positive integer valued vectors, x1 up to xr. Satisfying the equation, right? The equation of x1 plus x2 up to xr equals to n. For each one, for each number is positive, right? Each number is a counting number, right? We want to work with the counting number here. So this is a proposition, right? I think it has a proof. Does it have a proof? You should have proved some way. Let's see this proposition. There are this many n plus r minus 1 out of n plus r minus 1. Choose r minus 1 distinct non-negative. OK, see the difference? This is a non-negative. This is a positive, okay. So we do not allow the numbers, the axis to be zero or negative. So this is non-negative. Non-negative means it can be positive or zero. So now each one of, so it can be zero now, right? It can be zero now. It can be zero now. So, so for this one, none of them can be zero or negative. But this one, now we allow zero for them. So if we allow zero for them, how many 
uh, solutions, like this many different distinct solutions. So M plus R minus one, out of this, choose R minus one. Okay. This is a notation of a combination. So let's see six a. How many distinct non-negative, non-negative integer valued solutions for x one plus x two? So what's r? R is two, right? Because you see the last footnote is two. So r is two. What's n? N is three. N is three. So we just use the formula. Right? Three n plus r minus one. N plus r minus one. So three plus two minus one. Then out of this, may choose r minus one. What's r? r is two, two minus one. If we do the calculation, we just get four, right? Because out of four, choose one. How many ways? There are four ways. There are four ways. And then what are possible solutions? We can list them, right? Because only four. It could be zero comma three. It could be one comma two. It could be two comma one. It could be three comma zero. So this is a very simple example. Let's see 6B. The investor has 20,000 to invest among four possible investments. Each investment must be in units of 1,000. If the total of 20,000 is to be invested, how many different invest, investment strategies are possible? Right. So four, four investments, N equals 20,000, R equals the four, and each one has to be units of 1,000. It could be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, so on and so forth. So first let's right, use the notation XI. XI, because we have four possible investments, so we just have X1, X2, X3, X4, right? Well, you can just write down R equals the four, right? You recognize N equals this, R equals the four. And then you start from there. So that means because we start with 1,000, right? So so out of 20,000, how many 1,000 we have? We we'll have 20 of them. So we could simplify the question as this. x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 equals 20. Because each one measured in 1,000 units. Right? In 1,000 units. Mm -hmm. So by proposition 6.2, but now, because it's 1,000 positive numbers, right? Positive numbers to have a use. Oh, it doesn't say that, right? Yeah, each investment must be in units of 1,000, so it cannot be zero. So each one of these cannot be zero. X, oh, why? It says greater than or equal to zero. Hmm. Each investment must be in units of 1,000. OK, can zero be, be in units of 1,000? Hmm. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 equals 20. I don't know. I, for myself, I would use 6.1 proposition of 6.1 because you know each investment has to be or maybe it didn't say maybe it didn't say you know it cannot be zero or something okay let's just allow it to be zero then so that's the proposition of 6.2 okay so we have a 20 plus 4 minus 1 right 20 plus 4 minus 1 which is 23 and then we have four minus one, which is three. So out of 23, choose three. You can do the calculation. It's just 1,771 possible investment strategies. Let's see this. If not all of the money needs to be invested, then you will let X5 denote the amount kept in reserve. A strategy is non-negative. It's non-negative in the integer value vectors. Well, basically, this is seeing you just add one more, right? Add one more, so the money is not, some money is not invested in these four 
investments. So some money left, some money left. We just, you know, thinking as a reserve, as a group of reserve. So then we would add x5. We have x1 as up to x5 equals 20. Now we have 20 plus 5, because 5 groups now. 20 plus 5 minus 1, which is 24. We have Because we have 5 groups, 5 minus 1, which is 4. So out of 24, choose 4, we do the calculation. We get 10,626 possible strategies, possible okay, investment strategies. All right, pretty direct, right? Anyone has any questions? Wait, can you explain uh, how do you get the 23 from? Oh, okay. First, first, that's assumption. The assumption is in the four accounts, you know, the accounts can be zero. They don't invest any money into the account. So then if the account, if the first account, second account can be zero, we use 6.2 proposition for, because of non-negative, which means allows each one of these to be zero. That means we use this formula, n plus r minus 1. Out of n plus r minus 1, choose r minus 1. So here, what's n? 20, right? Because each account is 1,000 thousand units. So 1,000 is one unit. So 20, in 20,000, how many units? 20 units, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's why n is 20. What's R? We have four groups. Oh, R so it's 20 plus four and then minus one, right? That's right. Oh, okay. I understand now. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Same thing as this one. Anyone has any other questions? Okay, let's see this one. How many terms are there in the multinomial expansion of this x1 plus up to xr raised by n? Oh. The sum is over all non-negative integer valued. So that's this many. So let's just try to remember this. There's this many expansions. Out of n plus r minus 1, choose r minus 1 such terms. I don't want to go back to. Well, I have to. Okay, let's go back to 4C. Example 4C. What's example 4C? This one. So for C is saying, consider a set of n antennas of which m are defective and n minus m are functional. Assume that all of the defectives and all of the functionals are considered indistinguishable. So they're mixed together. How many linear orderings are there in which no two defectives are consecutive? Hmm. So right back then, yeah, so so that's the prop that's a proposition of oh, this is a little bit different. This is a different. Okay, anyone, let's go back to see here now. Consider. Oh, see, so in example 4C, in which we have a set of n atoms, n minus, my, n minus m, so m are no good, n minus m are good. Um, our objective is to determine the number of linear orderings in which no two defectives are next to each other. So to determine this number, let us imagine the defective atoms are lined up among themselves, and the functional ones are now to be put in position. So let's denote the x1 as a number of functional atoms to the left of the first defective. And 
define x2 as a number of functional atoms between the first two defectives, and so on. So we would have x1, x2, x then up to xn plus 1. So now there will be at least one functional atom between any pair of defective ones. So those ones are functional ones. We don't know how many. So it could be, you know, this many, this many between the second one, this many, so on and so forth. And each xi's are positive numbers. So number of outcomes satisfying the condition is the number of vectors. So which means, so x1 plus up to xm plus 1 equals the n minus m, y. Oh, here allows non-negative, allows each one to be 0 now, because it x equal, greater than or equal to 0 now, right? Because we define those axes as the functional ones. Right. So x1 is functional ones. So, so zero is uh, uh, well, the one, well, the bad ones. So x1, x2, xm up to xm plus one. Right. So those guys add up to be the functional ones, the good ones, which is n minus m, because m is the number of the defective ones. Now let's see y1 letting y1 equals x1 plus y one yi equals xi. Oh, only the first one, only y1 equals x1 plus one. Then the left of the uh, yi equals xi for i equals two up to m. So y m plus one equals m plus one plus one. We see that this number is equal to the number of positive vectors that satisfy this equation. So y1 plus y2 up to ym plus 1 equals n minus m plus 2. Because in the middle, all yi's equals xi's, right? Only y1, we add 1, x1 add 1. ym plus 1, we add 1 to x of m plus 1. So we add 2. So we add this one, we add this one, and the rest of the i's, for the rest of the i's, xi equals the yi. So that's why we have n minus m plus 2. Right. So then by, pro by proposition of 6.1, so this, because we plus 1, everyone is a positive number, number no, no zero now. By doing so, no zero now. Um, so by proposition 6.1, we have n minus m plus 1. Out of n minus m plus 1, choose m of them. So the same solution as for c. Right. This is not so important for us, but this is, this is a good you know, connection. The summary is multinomial coefficients, binomial theorem, and the multinomial theorem. This is nice. Verify this identity. Right. So each each x i can be zero. You go from zero up to n, and then we do a calculation that equals R v is by n. This looks like an exam question. All right. So um. Let's see, that's it for today. So multinomial, multinomial theorem, 
and uh, multinomial coefficients. And one of it was important. So usually, usually we'll have questions, some question like this, right? We would ask how many solutions are there for this equation, right? We're given an equation equals the number. So, okay, how many possible solutions? It right? depends on the question, how is the question asked? Is, if it's zero allowed for each one. If zero is allowed, if zero is not allowed, you use a 6.1, proposition 6.1. It's just n minus r, out of n minus r, choose r minus r. But most of the time, zero is, is allowed, which means non-negative integer solutions. So we'll do n plus r minus one out of n plus r minus one, choose r minus one of them. That's how many solutions. Right. Then you do a calculation. Right. Without that, this seems difficult, right? Seems difficult. So that's 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 the beauty of the 6.1, 6.2 propositions. The multinomial theorem is very similar to oh, very similar to very similar to binomial. Binomial has two terms. Oh, here, sorry, here, right? So here, here is missing something. So in this definition, it should be I, so I goes from one up to R. One, two, and three, okay. Adds up to N, N one, up to n r, okay, adds up to n, then this number, okay, right here, non-negative, all right? So all non-negative, which means zero is allowed, all right? So this is the important thing. It's similar to a binomial, right? Binomial allows zero too, allows the, 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 the exponent to be zero too, to be zero, right? start from the first term raised by the highest power n, but the second term raised by zero. So similarly, because non-negative includes a zero and a positive, non-negative means it's zero plus positive numbers. So non-negative basically means each ni can be zero. So we have to consider each ni to be zero. So practice on this, all right? Choose questions, practice on this multinomial theorem. And also two propositions. So today we learned the three things. Two propositions, uh, four things actually. Multinomial coefficients, right? Multinomial coefficients. And the two propositions, one for positive solution, one for non-negative solution. Then multinomial theorem. Anyone has any questions? Pretty simple, right? I would encourage every one of you because this, you are advanced students. I would like to encourage you first to do your homework, of course, you know, choose some interesting questions to do it. All right, don't always stay, choose some, start with some easy questions, but end up with some challenge and interesting questions. So we're going to talk about probabilities next time, all right? When is homework due? One due, homework one. Let's see, I'll give you two weeks because today we finished chapter one. I'll give you two weeks. We'll do it on 14th, all right? I'll put the due date on it. Due on February 14th. So we're going to talk about probabilities. All right, we're going to review some sample space events, stuff like that. Okay.
Okay, anyone has any questions? Okay, if no questions, go ahead starting to start to do your homework. And I'll put a due date on it. So we're due on February 14th. Um, so February 14th for homework one, is that? For homework one, yes. Okay. So I'm gonna put uh, due dates now. Two weeks should be enough, right? So you, you should do homework you know, after class every time. Uh, let's see, assignments. I go to assignments. Homework one, do, edit. February 14th. And uh, right before May night, okay? Okay, due date. Okay, have a good night, have a good night. If anyone wants to talk to me, I'm still here. Prepare for presentation for next time. Okay, thank you. Let me stop recording.